Hello, brothers and sisters. Anybody listening? Michael, humble seeker of truth. For rapture and apocalypse, the flood, and the first resurrection. So we're going to take a look at a couple areas in the word that um, have a lot of contention, uh, or they are the basis of a lot of contention. And uh, we're going to see if we can rightly divide it and um, increase our understanding it. It's probably a lot of review if you've been following along, but um, coming in from a different angle on a couple things, and um, I think it makes these topics really clear. So hopefully it's a, a blessing to you, and um, this is a Bible study, so we're going to uh, take our joy, and we're going to uh, spend some time with our Father as we are privileged to do. So we are still watching for our Lord. Um, you know, in these last days, these last hours before our Lord returns, uh, Satan's going to try to steal that joy from you. And, um, you know, he's, he's going to be whispering or screaming, he ain't coming back. He is coming back. Our Lord is coming. So don't stop watching. And uh, don't let anything steal your joy. Do you know how privileged you are to live right now? Of all the people that have ever lived on this planet, God chose you to be alive right now. He purposed you to be alive right now, to witness the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He chose you to plant seeds regarding that. And regarding salvation in his son, for such a time as this, how blessed and privileged we are. So with that, let's, uh, let's get into our teaching. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse 27. <clears throat> For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is there, the eagles will be gathered. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Glory to God. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So what I want to look at today is two things. I want to talk about this flood quite a bit. And is this, it says after the tribulation of those days, is that the great tribulation? I mean, it, it seems like it, it could be. Is this at the last trumpet and at the end of Jacob's trouble? Um, I also, we're going to talk about the first resurrection uh, in the latter part of this. So that's our question. When is this gathering? Okay, so... Uh, we are going to look at a lot of scripture today, as, uh, as I said, it's Bible study, and when we seek to answer a question, it behooves us to look at everything we can regarding it. All scripture has to fit like a hand in a glove. So many people will just pull a couple verses out, and uh, that's a mistake. <clears throat> John 10.10 10.
The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Glory to God. The thief is Satan. And uh, as, you know, this verse is uh, relevant for uh, throughout history. It's specific as well to Jacob's trouble. All right, and we're going to see that. We're going to focus on a few words. Flood, thief, and, uh, yeah, we'll figure out the other one as we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ezekiel 38. Let's start in uh, verse 14. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God in that day, When my people Israel shall dwell safely, shall thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. And it shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Verse 17, Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in my, the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. Verse 22, And I will plead or bring judgment against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord glory to God Gog is the thief is Satan and many other things throughout the word that is the enemy okay that God has told about throughout the word of God that he is going to bring against the land in the end. Let's keep going. Isaiah 54. Verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blows the coals in the fire and that brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. That's literally, I have created the destroyer to destroy. Micah 7. <clears throat> Little throat thing going on today, so. Sorry. Micah 7 verse 1. Woe is me. Once again, when we see that word woe, uh, Jacob's trouble. Woe is me, I as am. Sorry. 
sorry, it's Amos 7. Great place there in Micah. We've looked at that several times, but uh, that's not where we're going today. <laughs> Amos 7, verse 1. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers, locusts. In the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth, and it was the latter growth after the king's mowings. And it came to pass that then had made an end of eating the grass of the land, and I said, O Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee. By whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. And the Lord repented or relented for this. I shall, it shall not be, saith the Lord. Verse 4, Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. Shooting up, so locusts in the shooting up of the latter growth. Uh, in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth after the king's mowings. Okay, this is, uh, long story short, that is right after a gathering of believers, after a harvest. Okay, the king, people are put for grass in the word of God in several places. And it's after the king's mowings, okay? Right after, right after the king's mowings. In the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. Because there is going to be a harvest at the end of Jacob's trouble. So this is at the beginning of Jacob's trouble. And we see he brings locusts. All right. <clears throat> Joel 2. Joel, Joel, it's right before Amos. I love you guys. I hope you're all doing awesome. Super blessed. Wow. <laughs> Blow you the trumpet in Zion, verse 1, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord comes, it is nigh at hand. <clears throat> a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like. Neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is the Garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness or be pale. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another and shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up <clears throat> upon the houses. They shall enter in at the window like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble and the sun and the moon shall be dark. The stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? This is the flood. We're going to see it. Let's go to Revelation 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
It's also the cloud to cover the land. Revelation 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass on the earth, neither any green thing nor any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. Five months. This is the fifth trumpet. Okay, in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns of gold. And their faces were as the faces of men and they had the hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were, <clears throat> excuse me, the breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and their stings were in their tails, and their power was, in, was to hurt men five months. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Those names mean destroyer. He created the destroyer to destroy. <clears throat> Revelation 12. Now we're going to see God mark out signs in heavens, and this is a point in time that he knew we would be able to reference with our technology we have today. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, she being with child, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Put your finger there for a second. Go to verse, uh, or chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Same thing. Okay, I know there's a different number of crowns, but it, it's same thing, beast out of the sea. Sea here is put for heaven. Back to Rev 12. Verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. She brought forth the man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne, snatched away, harpazo. And the woman fled into the wilderness, for she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Interesting order of things, isn't it? Child is caught up unto God and to his throne, and then there's twelve hundred and sixty days. Now we start seeing, so God marks these signs in heaven. And now we're going to see the fulfillment, how they're going to be fulfilled. Verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. 
And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, who did accuse them day and night before the throne of God. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. This is not and cannot be talking about people throughout Jacob's trouble. This is all believers that have been killed. In uh, the fifth seal, we see them under the altar waiting for God to avenge their blood, which he's just about to do scripturally here. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. That is the destroyer. So then from there we see war on earth. And it describes then the beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth. There is a horde coming. A third of the angels of heaven are going to get cast to the earth like a cloud to cover the land. <clears throat> and like a flood. Isaiah 59. Verse 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and from the glory of the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard, a banner against him. All right, now let's go back to Matthew 24. Verse 27, for as the lightning comes out of the east and shines unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The powers and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That is Satan and his angels getting cast out of heaven before the 1260 days or at the beginning of it the tribulation here cannot be talking about jacob's trouble just the fifth trumpet alone okay is at least five months and god specifies it so you can't jump to the last trumpet and still have five months to go from the fifth trumpet right at least that's my understanding. This cannot be that tribulation. This is tribulation that in Romans 8, 22 and 23, the whole creation travails with us, waiting for the redemption of the purchased possession. Throughout, again, for at least a couple thousand years, there's been tribulation, and you shall have tribulation. This is not great tribulation, cannot be, and I'm going to continue to try to show that. It's okay with me. You, I'll make the point again. I just want to know what this says, but here's the thing. I don't just want to try to understand one verse. I, It's got to all fit together. Lots of different pieces to this puzzle for lack of a better word K 
keep your finger there. And let's go to Revelation uh, 6. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth as a fig tree casts her untimely or unripe figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, or literally the sky split. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men, rich men, captains, mighty men, bondmen, free men, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Jacob's trouble is the great day of his wrath. It is when he begins to avenge the blood of his servants, the prophets, and all those who have been martyred for the name of Jesus for their testimony. It's the sixth seal. The seventh seal is the seven trumpets. This cannot be the last trumpet. And it is exactly what Matthew 24 is speaking of. Sun shall be darkened, moon shall not give her light. We know from Joel, that's right before the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's the last step in God preparing the place for the bride. Kicking wickedness out of heaven. The stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and shall... All the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. <laughs> glory to God! <laughs> and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Glory to God. Let's keep going. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender, puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So likewise, when you shall see these things, know that it is near even at the door. Verily, I say unto you, this generation that sees these things shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Every word of this will come to pass. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And, he, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Two shall be in the field, one taken, the other left. Two women grinding at the mill, one taken and the other left. Watch therefore. And that's exactly what we're doing. For you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. The good man there is the master of the house. The thief. There's our thief again. And the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. 
And the thief and his thieves are going to get cast out of heaven like a flood. They're going to come on like a flood. We didn't keep reading in Revelation 12 where the serpent, Satan, the dragon, casts water out of his mouth as a flood. That is the fifth trumpet. So we have this sudden flood. I mean, they don't know what's coming. They're just carrying on and and then it comes like a thief. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, they're just carrying on. Just like in the days of Noah. Noah, by the way, was warning them. I mean, it took him 120 years to build an ark in the desert. You know everybody is talking about it. They're, ah. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Until the flood came. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them like travail upon a woman with child. Isaiah 66. As soon as her pain came, she gave birth. The child's born and caught up unto God and to his throne. Glory to God. Sudden destruction can only come before a... It can't come after a whole bunch of destruction. These things... Stinging men for five months? Tormented for five months? A 200 million man army after that. A third of the sun and moon gone. It's not... <laughs> I've made this point a bunch of times, okay? After all that, big, seemingly, asteroids hit the Earth. It's a completely different place. It's a Garden of Eden before them, comparatively, and a desolate wasteland after them. This whole earth is going to change. There's no one at the last trumpet saying peace and safety. And there's no sudden destruction anymore because there's been destruction like this world's never seen. This is sudden destruction because it's not at the last trumpet. It's at the first trumpet. It doesn't say for, or last trumpet in Thessalonians because it's not. And it doesn't say last trumpet in Matthew 24 because it's not. Nor can it be. That flood coming upon them when they're not ready is the exact same thing it's talking about here. It's sudden destruction. And one, one's taken, the other's left. Same thing. Then he goes on in Matthew 24 to give us examples. Good servant watching for his Lord. Evil servant. Gnashing. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. The ten virgins. Five wise. They're watching for their Lord. They're watching for the bridegroom. Five foolish. Door shut. I don't know you. You don't know me, says the Lord. Sudden destruction comes upon them. As travail upon a woman with child. That travail is Jacob's trouble. It is the trumpet judgments. Uh, 
a couple things here on, on this part of the topic. And then we're going to look at the first resurrection because that can be extremely confusing. But once you see it, it it's actually quite simple. Matthew 24, if you followed along at all, you know I talk about pattern in chapter and verse and that this is God's word. He's the God of this word. He authored it and he is the God of chapter and verse. And I'm going to show you a glaring example of that in Matthew 24. So Matthew is not just a book in the Bible. It's the 40th book in the Bible. And it it's talking about the return of the Lord, the day of the Lord, or the first one, the gathering of the 99 sheep, the bride of Christ, that all have Christ in them. We'll come back to that. So this is a very key chapter, Matthew 24. So if there's some kind of pattern in chapter and verse, it should, we should be able to see it here. Let's start in verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in many places. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, the wrath of God is sorrows. Verse 7 is the beginning of sorrows because it's seven. There's at the end, he declared the end from the beginning. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. So seven seals, seven seals open, gathering, six seals. Satan and his angels get cast out of heaven. It goes bam, bam, bam. Six seal, seventh seal, first trumpet. Seven seals in is harvest. Seven seals, completion and perfection for the bride of Christ. First trumpet, new beginning of judgment, wrath. Fourteen then is seven seals, seven trumpets. Last trumpet, gathering of the lost sheep, completion and perfection. And the first bowl, judgment. So, verse 7, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in many places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and betray one another, and they shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound lawlessness, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall come the end. The gospel will be preached in Jacob's trouble. And there will be a harvest at the last trumpet of the lost sheep, the corners and the gleanings. Verse 14. Verse 15. Now we kind of reset. See, once we, when we understand how God uses these numbers, not always. If it applies by picture, pattern, or prophecy, there's a good chance it applies. So we don't just every verse 7, we just read it this way and that's it. Cross the board. No, we just, we apply that wisdom. Does it fit? And it helps expand our thinking and our understanding. Verse 15, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso reads, let him understand, then... Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Verse 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Verse 19. 
2019. And woe unto them. Woe is a marker for Jacob's trouble, great tribulation. I can't say every time in the word, but definitely most of the time. And certainly in Matthew 24. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Verse 20, pray you that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Verse 22, 2022, the end of Jacob's trouble. And except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That is referencing Psalm 90. The days of our years are 70. If by reason of strength they be 80, yet those years are labor and sorrow. Jacob's trouble, great tribulation, wrath of God. But soon they're cut off and we fly away. We fly away. Gathering of the lost sheep, the corners and the gleanings. If God let Israel become 80 years old, no flesh would survive. And so when they're 75 or 74 and a half, which God references them being 75, we'll talk about that before we're done, in 2022, the fall feast will be fulfilled. That's a set. Okay? Then he gives us more information and then the rest we've talked about. All right. Let's go to Isaiah 28 for a minute. Dear Sister Colleen, thank you for leading me here. Um, and I've only spent a moment here um, since then. as I was getting prepared for this, but I did see something I found very interesting. Isaiah 28, verse 15. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death. You know, I think there's some guy running around saying that the covenant was made in 2015. Not random, this is verse 15. Not at all. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. They think they're good to go. They made an evil pact. Verse 16, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. In the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. In the waters shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing, overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. Verse 19, from the time that it goes forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. The covenant with death is a covenant with the destroyer. And they think, and the covenant is to divide the land of Israel for profit and worse. And that covenant 
was made in 2015 and it's about to be broken. The peace agreement is a smokescreen. Just one man's opinion. Alright, Revelation 20. I just can't seem to do these in less than an hour. <laughs> I recorded this yesterday. Uh, and it was about 45 minutes and I went to upload it. I listened to it back and I felt like I had made it confusing. So hopefully uh, I didn't make this confusing. I redid it. Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death. Hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Clearly it says it's the first resurrection. I want to point a couple things out. First of all, this is people in Jacob's trouble. Absolutely, because God doesn't just specify those that have uh, died for uh, the word of God in their testimony. Loved not their lives unto the death. This specifies they did not worship the beast nor take his mark or his image. That is Jacob's trouble. This is talking about that those that come through Jacob's trouble without receiving the mark of the beast. And uh, the first resurrection. How can that be? If there's a gathering, a resurrection at the beginning of Jacob's trouble, how can the first resurrection then be at the end of Jacob's trouble at the last trumpet? Well, we need to understand a little bit about Old Testament believers. So when we read that in Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain, and by context, we which have Christ in us, just like the dead in Christ, Christ in you, that was not available until Jesus Christ accomplished his work on the cross, ascended to the Father, and sent the promise of the Father that he told them about. Power from on high, the Spirit of Christ in you, made of two Jew and Gentile, a new man, a new creation that hadn't existed since Adam lost Holy Spirit very in the very beginning of the age. The bride of Christ. You ever wonder why did God make Eve from Adam? He could have just made her like he did Adam. But he didn't. He took a a rib from Adam. He made her from Adam. It's a figure of Jesus Christ and his bride. His bride is made from him. They have Christ in them. Very, very specific, unique group of people. Glory to God. Old Testament believers, bless their hearts, couldn't have Christ in them. It wasn't available yet. They're believing in God was, and they're looking for a Messiah, the Christ, was counted to them for righteousness. God could put his spirit upon them, but it wasn't the same thing. It wasn't an eternal, incorruptible seed. The spirit of Christ in you. And so their believing could be counted and was counted for righteousness and, and they're saved. But 
there is no gathering of the bride for them. So they had two resurrections available to them. The first resurrection, the resurrection of the just. And the second resurrection, the resurrection of the unjust. And those for Old Testament believers were the resurrections. There, there was no harvest of the bride for them. Okay? And that's who we're talking about here is those that make it through Jacob's trouble and those that have fallen asleep throughout the ages, righteous before God because of their believing. Abraham's the father of all who believe. For them, it's the first resurrection. Go to uh, Hebrews 11. So this is the roll call of witnesses and um, definition of faith, believing. So by faith, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, and Rahab. And what more shall I say then, verse 32, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, Samson and Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong and waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. For them, the first resurrection. At the end of Jacob's trouble, the last trumpet. And that's how it's still called the first resurrection, but is not the harvest of the bride. The gathering of the bride happens when they say peace and safety, and sudden destruction comes upon them, like travail, Jacob's trouble, and like a flood. Genesis 12, we're going to close here, looked at this many times now, verse 1, now the Lord, this is the very first thing God says to Abram, he's not even Abraham yet, first words he says to him, now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show you. Verse 4, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy-five years old. Israel will be seventy-five. They'll be seventy-four and a half in 2022, where God calls them 75 at the end of the age, just like he did with Noah, Genesis 7. He says Noah's in his 600th year, which makes him 599, and then five verses later calls him 600 years old. At the end of that age, before the flood came. If Abraham could have been part of the bride, God would have said this to him when he was 70. God, <laughs> he is so amazing. He chose when to say this to Abram. It isn't, it's not just some random thing. And Abraham was 75, just a meaningless, uh, you know, a little 
you know, just a little biblical fact. No, God picked this time to he purposed and chose his words to Abram when Abram was 75. Because it's a picture of the first resurrection for Abram at the end of Jacob's trouble at the last trumpet in 2022. Glory to God. God bless you guys. I pretty much have a teaching uh, ready. I'm going to try to get done in the next day or two here if uh, we're still here. I would really, really recommend watching for our Lord and his return. Planting seeds. Each moment, each breath is purposed and privileged. I love you guys. God bless you.